Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is a true generational leap in home flight simulation. The graphics alone offer breathtaking experience at times that really evoke the feeling of flight. It isn't a perfect game, and one of the aspects of the game that I personally feel to be lacking is the native live, uh, native live weather engine. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at Rex's Weather Force 2020 engine and see how it stacks up against the native weather engine in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I'll talk about the differences between the two, and hopefully leave you with a better idea of whether to purchase this tool or not. So be sure to stick around to the end, and if you find this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. Now before we get into it, I want to welcome back all of our uh, new subscribers, returning viewers and such. Thank you guys so much for helping grow this channel. And if you're new here, a little bit about myself. I am a degreed meteorologist. I forecast weather as my primary job, and I fly planes in my off time. So I particularly feel uniquely qualified to, uh, I guess, talk a little bit about this application. And I'm really excited to talk about it because uh, I really do like it. I think it's got a lot of potential. And uh, I want to share my thoughts on this uh, product with you guys. Now the application itself is pretty intuitive to follow. I mean, it's got, you can click on, you can add your favorite airports on the right, check out the current weather there, see some winds and temperature aloft stuff. And I'll talk about some of this in detail. Um, you can you can load in dynamic predefined situations. You can search for weather. Um, and then the settings here, uh, real time, weather injection, all sorts of stuff, the update intervals, and then the uh, rate at which it updates itself. And uh, so it's pretty intuitive to, and it's very simple, right? Very, very simple and very easy to use. So let's talk about how to use it in the sim. Well, it's pretty easy to use in a sim. All you have to do is have the weather force application going and then run the sim. And once you get in the flight, you just start weather synthesis. Now, before you hit the synthesis button, you need to make sure that your weather is set to clear skies preset. It doesn't matter what time you have it set to, but if you want live weather, I assume you want to use the live time. You just want to make sure that the clear skies preset is set. You can even do this in the flight if you want rather than in the menu. It still works. Loading into the simulator now, I'm going to start with the default version of live weather within the simulator and almost immediately we can see that it does a decent but not great job of capturing the conditions. For example, the METAR suggests clouds at about 900 feet AGL, whereas glancing around the bases of the clouds, they're about 8 to 10,000 feet from my perspective. Additionally, we can see the winds are out of the east northeast at 5 knots whereas the METAR in reality reports winds out of the east-southeast, and there doesn't appear to be any reduction in visibility. Looking around, again, does this compare well to the METAR? Overcast 900 is a lot lower to the ground than what we're seeing directly above us, which seems to be broken rather than overcast. So the next thing to do is set the clear sky preset, which I've already done, and then hit the injection button. Once you do that, it's going to take a moment to appear, but no fear, it'll show up, and when it does, Hopefully, it's going to be very representative. You can see that now, yes, we have 900 foot ceilings and a slight visibility reduction. This looks a lot more like I'd expect based on the weather pattern that we have going on here and the observations that are coming out of the airport. One thing that I did immediately notice is that the winds aloft data itself seems a little off. I'm looking at the winds and yeah, south southwest at 20 to 30 knots seems kind of okay in the lowest levels. But as we ascend to closer to 18,000 feet, we should be seeing westerly winds of about 40 knots by looking at the GFS data that this supposedly is derived from. Overall, it seems to be doing a decent, not great job. Certainly much better than the uh, native engine, but the winds are coming out of the west still, which seems to be pretty off as well. I did notice as I began my takeoff roll that it flipped to the east-northeast. We'll do a short little takeoff here, and we'll climb to about 18,000 feet and see how those conditions change as we climb. So sit back and enjoy the sounds and sights. Now climbing out is when these weather engines begin to shine. Our visibility has dropped to seven, six miles or so. And as we climb higher up into the clouds itself, we lose any visual reference whatsoever. 
giving you a little taste of what it's like to fly visual flight rules into IMC. Despite not having the physical sensations, it can still become a little bit disorientating. As we climb past uh, 10,000 feet, we start to approach the top of the cloud layer. Uh, in this case, it was basically at 14,000, 15,000 feet. Totally beautiful sight there. Uh, but I did decide to compare this to some of the aviation cloud top forecast, and it did okay. It ranges from about 11,000 to 15,000 feet. So I give it an overall solid grade. And now just left to enjoy the remarkable views atop the cloud layer. Now after spending some time flying around, my overall impression is pretty solid. The application definitely does better than the native simulator engine at capturing real world conditions. On the whole, winds are generally in the direction they're supposed to be, and they do update as you go on. Cloud layers and visibility are captured very well, I'm a big fan of that. Temperature and pressure are reliably captured, and it does immerse you in the real world conditions. Nothing takes you out of the immersion of the simulator faster than in airspace, than flying in airspace than the real world is IFR, but in the sim's live weather engine is visual flight rules. That said, it isn't without some things to work on. For example, in this clip I've reached my cruise altitude of 18,000 feet and yet my winds are out of the southwest at 25 knots, whereas the GFS model itself says that I should be in westerly winds of about 40 to 45 knots. I don't know if this is something to do with the way it injects data into the simulator or if the data itself is wrong. I'm really not sure, but that was one thing I noticed pretty early on. Not a fault of the app itself, but more the method of basing conditions on METARs is the problem of having really localized conditions not captured. For example, this scene here in Portland. Portland's METAR at the time indicated visibility of a half mile or even less. This was due to shallow fog in the vicinity of a river. The application itself pulled from a METAR 25 kilometers away, despite me being on the active runway at Portland. This small difference of 25 kilometers may not matter in widespread fog and stratus conditions, but when localized to a river, this can be the difference between clear skies and seven statute mile visibility and low IFR conditions with half mile visibility. It still did a decent job capturing the low and mid-level clouds, I'll give it that. And it's not like Microsoft Flight Simulators did any better, with literal clear skies being shown here. Sometimes I found the app menu itself to be a bit slow or clunky, and here you can see I'm trying to re-engage live weather mode in mid-flight, and it pulls in a cloud layer at my flight level, but it doesn't tell me what METAR it's pulling from. This isn't a huge deal, but as a meteorologist and pilot, it's something that I would like to see for myself. In a sparsely populated area, such as Alaska, you may have significant distances between where you're at in the simulator and the METAR it's pulling from. In this case, the station it pulled from was about 90 miles away. Is this representative of what's actually happening where we are? It might be, it may not be. Conditions in the low levels of the atmosphere can vary on the scale of a few miles. So that's one thing you'll need to consider, and it's one area that the default sim model may work as good or better and I'll explain why that's the case in a moment. The injection method itself lends questions as to how it works. Every 10 minutes it pulls in data, I assume from a nearby METAR. This is fine and it's how third party weather engines tend to work, but in the case of winds aloft, I'm not sure if it's pulling how high you are and then pulling in wind data from the winds aloft uh, data set, or if it pulls in the whole data set and then figures out where you are, then loads in the wind data at that flight level. Either way, it does seem that there are kinks to work out with the winds aloft data, for the reasons I discussed before. So what's the verdict? Should you get this? Well, if you're like me and you enjoy flying on VATSIM, it's almost a necessity. The in-game engine is just too unreliable to get that immersive experience you want when you're flying online. And the wind issues that the native game engine produces will have a tangible impact to traffic flows when you're flying in congested airspace on the VATSIM network. But if you're new to the simulator and aviation in general, well, perhaps you don't really need the most accurate real world weather. The fact is that the in-game the, the visuals don't change, it's just the parameters that change, and you can control those yourself. So if you're new to this, I would play around with that if you're not happy with what live weather is giving you. The primary difference between the two, that is the native one and this third party one by Rex, is how they create data sets for their weather. As far as I can tell, the native game uses straight up model data with no observations at all. That means that if the GFS or ECMWF, two global scale models, say there's a cold front near I-70 in Kansas, then the conditions in the game will very vaguely represent that. But there'll be errors in the cloud layers, the coverage, how high they're located, visibility can be completely off, and things like precipitation especially, I think are gonna be hit or miss. Models simply can't be accurate enough to bring such precise weather into the game. A weather forecasting model simply doesn't have the precision to forecast a thunderstorm that's really happening in real life, and then we, if, if the model isn't getting that right, then it doesn't matter what we ingest into the game. 
We just don't have the computational power or the observation network in reality to make that a possibility. A SOBO's model-based approach is close enough for the casual simmer, but if you want representative conditions everywhere you go, with a caveat for sparsely populated areas, then you'll want to seriously consider this application. It's only $20, and to my mind, it's very easy to justify if you fly even once a week. I definitely recommend purchasing this for accurate weather, but I would go in knowing the flaws it currently has that I've highlighted in this video. And I hope that the winds aloft stuff gets sorted out as this seems to be the biggest flaw in the application right now. I have no regret with my purchase, especially considering the price point, and I look forward to any updates from Rex. This weather engine should be good competition for Active Sky, who unquestionably had the premier weather engine for X-Plane, Prepared, and FSX before this. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, and I encourage you to subscribe for more aviation, weather, and flight sim content. Let me know what you guys think about Weather Force 2020 in the comments below, and as always, I hope to see you guys in the Vatsim skies.